Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning everyone. So, today's class you will find a little different from whatever we have been doing so far. It is on melodrama and I will be discussing a very popular Hindi film. I am sure all of you have heard of it or you are familiar with it. This is Diwar 1975 film directed by Yash Chopra and uh, written by the great screenwriting screenwriter duo Salim Javed. The, uh, the movie starred Amitabh Bachchan and uh, Shashi Kapoor and Nirupa Rai who played their mother. Now, um, why Diwar? Uh, generally when we talk about popular uh, cinema which uh, impersonates a national myth, we talk about uh, Mehboob Khan's Mother India which is uh, uh, one of the milestones in Hindi cinema. I would like to talk about Diwar which I think you know uh, came at a particular time in Indian history and also it was a time of uh, um, certain national upheavals especially um, the emergency in India during that period. So, it was a, a, a turbulent time, it was also historically a very important period in um, our history. So, this is, uh, this is the significance of Diwar and of course, the fact that it gave birth to it consolidated Amitabh Bachchan's position as uh, one of the greatest superstars or leading men in uh, Indian cinema. It is still referred to very frequently, seriously and sometimes frivolous, uh, frivolously, uh, particularly in a you know, indie movie called Lawrence of Punjab and uh, um, A. R. Rahman too in his Academy Award acceptance speech quoted the famous line from Diva Mere Paas Maa Hai. So, what I would like you to do is uh, watch that particular scene, go to the YouTube and please watch two scenes from Divar and then resume watching this video. I want you to watch two scenes, one is uh, um, the scene which where Shashi Kapoor says Mere Paas Maa Hai and also the scene where uh, Amitabh Bachchan refuses to sign a particular document that Shashi Kapoor, his brother who is a cop now and he wants him to sign. So, he says that I am not going to sign unless and until you get signatures from every crook who has committed various sins against him. So, this is these are the two scenes that I want you to watch and then resume watching this uh, lecture. We will be talking about discussing this uh, those two scenes also with reference to what we are doing now. So, um, let me continue. Uh, Diwar is a allegory of the partition of India. Okay. This is uh, this is not something very new. This was done in Mother India. It was also shown in uh, Yash Chopra's uh, blockbuster Vakt, which is again about uh, the great joint family, particularly Hindu joint family that is scattered. Also, um, uh, Manoj Kumar's Upkar, where he plays his uh, iconic character Bharat. He has come to be identified as the character Bharat, uh, where again uh, the dichotomy, the uh, binaries between two brothers, the good one, the bad one, the wayward one, the wayward brother goes away he is westernized, he is highly, highly educated, city bred uh, born, uh, uh, not born exactly, but city bred and influenced by the corrupt forces of city, you know morally uh, decadent forces. And um, uh, the good brother, uh, the older brother as played by Manoj Kumar, who is called Bharat, in the film he is uh, uh, homegrown, he is uh, uh, the son of uh, the soil, he is Bharat. Okay, so, um, the allegory is very clear. 
okay, and he is the essentially good man. Also, he represents the rural India. So, all the virtues of the rural are represented, are embodied in his character. So, um, and at the end, the wayward brother is uh, brought back to the family. And the point is that uh, all these films are like allegories of the partition of India. Okay, uh, at the end, Bharat loses both his arms very significantly and there is a metaphor. You can read, there is a, sub, a subtext there, which uh, remains to be read there. He loses both his arms, but then the wayward brother as played by Prem Chopra, he comes back and he says, uh, you know, Bharat uh, can never lose his arms and he offers both his arms to, um, uh, to this wounded hero of ours. So, the fact, the idea is that the wayward brother will always return. There was an imagination, there was a hope that the wayward brother would return, would come back into the fold, in the family, great joint family fold. So, this is what we are talking about, you know, the, the romanticized nation. This was, okay, coming back to Divar, now this was a period of uh, the emergency and um, there was a, a feeling of deep disillusionment with the system. Okay. It was also a period when uh, uh, society was getting corrupt, okay, politically, morally. There was uh, an overall atmosphere of fear, which is often reflected in the dialogues. Okay. It has, uh, Divar has some of the greatest dialogues and greatest scenes of all time, as you have just watched the mm, phenomenal scene where um, and look at the framing of the scene the two brothers they are standing under the bridge okay the bridge acts as a metaphor this is the place from where they uh, started off in the beginning where uh, uh, the little boy vijay you know who grows up uh, to become amitabh bachchan he stands there and listens to the songs um, that uh, this uh, anthem that school children uh, are singing. So, this is the, this is what we are supposed to read into the film that uh, the, the bridge acts as a kind of a symbol which was the, which was uh, in the beginning it joins them and later they stand under the same bridge and now they are both, you know, it's, there is a fracture, there is a rupture between the two brothers. So, great scenes. Uh, Again, look at uh, uh, the fact that the movie mother is uh, at the is the central figure. It is a story of a mother and her two sons. It's very interesting. The the leading ladies or the love interests of the two sons they do exist, but they are peripheral characters. They even if you remove them, uh, particularly um, Shashi Kapoor's leading lady it would not really make much of a difference to the movies. She is there just for the song and dance routine. Okay. But the brothers fight for the love and affection uh, and recognition by their mother. This is significant. Um, like most Indian epics, you also come across the trope of the absentee father. You know, this was very much brought about in Mother India, absentee father, father in the, and it is all up to the mother. So, mother is the motherland, that idea is very clearly brought about in Mother India as well as Divar. Uh, there is also the a scene with a tattoo, the son is marked forever, my father is a thief, you know, Mera Baap Chor has seen and which leads to migration. So, migration to uh, uh, from uh, rural to the urban, it becomes an important theme in Divar because that was that point, newly developing and industrialized uh, countries such as us, where uh, rural mi uh, migration or rather the uh, migration from the rural to the urban was becoming a major concern. Uh, so, Vijay and his family, they are a small town people and then you know they come from this uh, mining town and after that they are brutally treated by the owners and they are forced to leave and the father just disappears, the absentee father. 
very symbolic scenes in Diwar. For example, um, Vijay and Ravi in the beginning and uh, also um, when they first meet and then when they come back together uh, under the bridge, okay, you find them walking off in two different directions. Now, this is very telling that they are two brothers, they love each other, but how different are their ideologies. One of the most memorable scenes of uh, Diwar and which perhaps established Amitabh Bachchan as the angry young man of our times was uh, his confrontation with the dockyard goons. Um, these goons, they collect uh, a certain amount of money on a weekly basis. So, it is the extortion money and uh, uh, from the dockyard workers and uh, uh, the poor workers do not have a choice, but they have to give up their money till Vijay cannot take it anymore and then he rises up in protest and confronts the evil dockyard uh, goons. So, the idea is that there one man can always do that. This was also something very new for the Indian audience. Um, however, it, the movie does have certain resonance of uh, Elia Kazan's great on the waterfront, which is also about the goons and the extortionists that exist uh, on the peripherals, you know, in the ma ma dockyard and uh, in the backyards of our uh, 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 homes, where everyone is so terrified of their uh, arm twisting tactics that they have no other choice. So, the idea is that we need a hero of that power, that is structure, that is stature, that is strength, who can confront these people and deliver us of them. So, that idea comes across and that was uh, also the central theme of On the Waterfront, Elia Kazan's dire uh, directed, where um, Malin Brando's character stands up to the, uh, to the mafia, to the dockyard mafia. Diwar is full of great lines and at one point uh, a little Vijay um, uh, tells one of the um, uh, gang lords, mafia men who is a good guy at heart played by Iftikhar and he says, uh, uh, Vijay is a too shine boy. So, he um, and uh, wherever this uh, mafia lord, he goes to the races. He stops at particular point and Vijay is the little boy who always polishes his shoes. So, he is the shoe shine boy, regular one for this um, character. And uh, when this man throws a coin at uh, uh, the little boy, the little boy gets up and he says, Main I do not pick up coins, I am not a beggar and this scene is repeated. There are lots of repeat repetitions in Divar. Scenes and lines are repeated, metaphors are repeated, symbols are repeated. So, this is uh, this is something that uh, you know we are doing a course in film appreciation. So, this is something that you should be you should be sensitive to. Um, I just told you about the fact that Diva does not have uh, you know a leading lady, uh, which is true in the case of uh, Shashi Kapoor's love interest. but. Uh, interestingly, Parveen Babi's character, uh, which is uh, there um, uh, for uh, um, and she is the love interest of Amitabh Bachchan and uh, very uh, interesting character. She plays Anita, who is uh, a morally ambiguous heroine. Now, this was something very unusual for those times. She smokes, she drinks, you know they have a live in relationship, Vijay and Anita. And there are no judgments pronounced there. And we are talking about a movie which was made in 1975. Okay, so uh, they share a cigarette. They uh, um, she gets pregnant with his child. They drink, but they smoke, and um, she is still a heroine. And it was played by Parvin Bobby, who was you know if you remember, um, she is one of the uh, heroines. Uh, leading ladies of Hindi cinema who can be credited for uh, breaking the shackles of the conventional 
traditionally pro, uh, portrayed or represented the good girl kind of Hindi film heroine. Okay. So, she is definitely not the good girl in the conventional way, but she is still the heroine. Okay. She is the one who he loves. Of course, you know mother is the uh, woman he loves the most in the world, but you know she wise for his affections and attention. She is the one who you know uh, sh uh, she um, is a catalyst for causing a change in him. Okay. So, he is willing to give up his uh, um, criminal ways in order to start a family with Anita. So, therefore, she is important and at the end when he murders someone, it is because uh, he has lost the love of his life. Okay. So, Anita is a, a character, you know some of you who are interested in doing work like representation of women on Hindi film screen. So, you can look at the 70s, very important period um, as far as uh, you know representation of women is concerned. Another great scene is uh, the point where uh, Vijay and uh, Ravi, so they realize that their father has died uh, very anonymous death and uh, um, Vijay's mother or Ravi's mother as uh, she is uh, putting the applying the vermilion dot on her forehead, Ravi comes and uh, pulls her hand away. So, this is symbolic that she is no longer entitled to you know she has lost the right to call herself a, a, a married woman in the sense that she is a widow now. And again we think we talk about the family where the older brother has all the rights and Vijay although he is the estranged brother he comes and sets the funeral pyre ablaze. Now, this scene is done very quietly. Okay. You do not find too many dialogues, okay, too much of hysteria, but it is still what we are talking about, it still fits the melodramatic mood. Yeah. The way the director sets the mise en scene here, the music, the clothes, the costumes, the framing of the scene, okay, this is important. So, uh, and at the end, when, when he extends his arm, to um, set the funeral pyre ablaze, you find the same old tattoo on Vijay's arm that is permanently etched on his arm, but more significantly on his soul. It has scarred him forever. That is, Mera Baap Chor hai. my father is a thief. This was done to him by a group of uh, uh, the town people who believe that father has a mm, sort of sold them off, the, the rights of the workers okay, have, uh, have been sold off to the, to the minor, to the mine owners, okay, which is not true, but uh, this is a stigma that this family has to live with. So, again bridge serves as a memory, as a motif for memory and also uh, song, the song that Sare uh, Jahan Se Acha which plays constantly in the background. Ravi has almost erased the past, but Vijay remembers this is important. Um, you also have echoes of Elia Kazan's East of Eden here. See, Elia Kazan, strictly speaking, is a, a social realist, but his movies are also known for very refined melodrama. If you watch that, so his so his brand of social realism, his brand of um, uh, elegant melodrama, I am very sure that it must have impacted the writers and directors of that period. It was very relevant to that period. So, East of Eden is also referred to in certain scenes where the two brothers compete in the in East of Eden for the uh, for their father's affections and here uh, the gender is reversed. The two brothers compete for the affections of their mother. The mother you remember the scene where mother is hospitalized and Vijay comes to the Vijay goes to um, the temple for the first time in years and confronts God. Okay, he stands before the statue and then he the famous monologue Aaj khush to bahut ho gaya. Samita Bachchan, um, you know he has delivered a series a number of monologues great monologues and one of his greatest most often quoted 
monologues of all time the, when he confronts god so he is a hero he is a here is a hero who not only is scared of standing up to the mortal goons but he can also stand up to god themselves so he is like our captain ahab he is marked okay captain ahab the character from herman melville's moby dick he is marked he is a marked man okay but he is also uh, a hero a hero of immense stature okay and who can who can confront anyone he can look at uh, sun in the eye and interrogate that is what melville talks about it and that's how melville describes his hero in moby dick and he in vijay's character also we find echoes of similar pride his pride is important right mai aaj bhi pheke hue paise nahi leta he is a man who wouldn't allow who won't allow anyone to hurt his pride um we are talking about uh, the social situation uh, and the emergency period and there is a, a scene very melodramatic scene where ravi opens fire on a little boy okay and then he realizes the boy what was the boy stealing this a piece of uh, bread you know the family has been starving for uh, a couple of days and uh, here is a teenage boy and uh, he uh, shoots him in the leg but uh, he realizes that the, that the boy is innocent he was just taking food for his family and ravi is then cursed by his mother by, by the boy's mother she says that you know there are bigger goons in this society in this country and w- all that you can you, the, you could do was to shoot my little boy okay so now this is a condemnation of ravi okay does it upstage ravi as the moral voice we don't know so devar is a very interesting study in moral ambiguity all characters have this touch of ambiguity if ravi is morally upright doesn't he go too far at the end he is the one who uh, opens fire on his brother and shoots him and mother is the one who has blessed him is uh, is mirroring the, the ending of mother india where uh, the mother herself shoots her son dead because she, she feels that he has strayed from the righteous path and that's what ravi also does um as he is urged by his mother to do he kills his brother okay um this is also a movie and uh, you can also read melodramatic readings into it the um the motif you know the 786 the the badge appears quite frequently and uh, vijay treats it as a lucky mascot so many scholars have seen uh, this motif as a uh, playing to the gallery you know the kind of the uh, uh, something like a tokenism for communal harmony so he is always wearing his badge bearing the number 786 uh, this is his number when uh, he is a uh, uh, a worker um at uh, uh, the dockyards but uh, once he comes up in life through crime he always keeps the badge close to his ha- heart and often in the movie that badge saves his life but at the end when he loses the badge he gets killed by his brother <coughs> vijay is denied a complete family uh, because of his de- because of the death of his pregnant girlfriend and a, a mother is a law giver okay she is the one who hands ravi a gun and gives blessings the idea is she say, t- she tells him the woman has done her duty now a mother will do hers ek aurat ne apna farz ada kar liya ab ek maa apna karegi and then she goes off to meet her son at the appointed place which is the temple where the three of them used to go together once upon a time vijay dies in his mother's lap and uh, um, again it reflects crisis in the state yeah the family has been prevented from coming back together so again a metaphor you know crisis of the state so there is an internal schism of the modern state where the coexistence of the law and the community is a conflicting terrain 
and here I quote you from Madhav Prasad, the ideology of the Hindi film. We should also know that uh, uh, there is the uh, mythologically speaking, the good brother, the favored brother and also the brother who sacrifices more and uh, gets killed at the end by the brother who is uh, conventionally the good brother. Diwar is also interesting because um, uh, there are certain experiments. I, I just um, told you about the morally ambiguous characters, the morally ambiguous heroine and the absence of songs. Now, uh, there were six songs initially in this movie, but three were retained and none of which appear consequential to the narrative at all. Even if you remove that, those songs, it really would not matter to the overall narrative. So, thank you very much.